Hello, Steve Love here with Prosperity Through Real Estate. Also, you can go to prosperitythroughrealestate.com, Las Vegas RIA, or RIA Las Vegas. Actually, if you want to know that website, it's RIALV.com for RIALasVegas.com. Anyway, I'm here to interview again my good friend, Mr. Ted Thomas, who I've known for well over 30 years. He's been making... I guess millionaires uh, during that whole time. Uh, he's taught everything about every kind of real estate out there. But today we're going to be talking to him again about tax liens and tax deeds. Um, if you missed our first two interviews, <clears throat> let me re let me encourage you to go back and find those and and play those. I hope you don't think I'm too skeptical, but I wrote down a bunch of questions here I want to ask you. So, Ted, well, first of all, this is not skeptical. Uh, skeptical. Can you just review for our members, our attendees, what exactly a tax lien certificate is? Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so the government in the United States is uh, state government, and they pass all the uh, authority and work levels as they can down to the county. So every county, in order to run the county, they have to have some money to do that. And the money to run the county basically comes from property taxes. So basically, every property in the United States, except for the church, is going to have to pay taxes. So how do they do that? Well, the assessor comes out and says, 1% of the value is the tax. So if you have a house worth 400000 that means you're going to have to pay $4,000 a year in tax. So everybody's familiar with that. So once a year, you have to pay your tax bill. If you get a bill, it's probably as long as your arm. It's got the mosquito district on it. It's got water. And it's got the school teachers and the police department and the fire department and Everybody that you're paying, say, oh, my goodness, I'm paying on. All right, so the county has to collect that. So there's a certain amount of people that run into trouble. Now, we just went through COVID. So a lot of people got COVID, but, you know, maybe you have to pay the doctor, they take care of the kids. They didn't pay the tax. So if you don't pay your tax, they're going to slap your hand and they're going to put you in default. So a tax lien certificate, which you don't have in California, but we'll learn it, uh, is issued on a property that's in default. So the property's in default. So now that it's in default, they're going to issue this certificate. It's just a piece of paper. It's a tax bill. So anybody, I can come in and pay your tax. Steve can come in and pay the tax. And the beauty in buying them is, if you bought them in Arizona, uh, that certificate pays a very high interest rate. It's an outrageous interest rate. Matter of fact, the banks are paying 1%. In Arizona, you can earn 16%. Here in Florida, where I am, you can earn 18%. If you went to Iowa, you could earn 24%. I won't do them all. I'll just do one more. And then Illinois, you could earn 36 So you get the idea. So if you buy a tax certificate, only two things can happen with a tax certificate. One, you get your money back and that high interest rate. That's one. But if they don't pay you, you get the property for what you just paid. You get the property without a mortgage. The mortgage is X'd out. Now, how could they do that? Well, the legislature tells the treasurer, Levy the tax, collect the tax. If you can't collect it, push the people out, confiscate the property. So that's what happened. So that's a tax lien certificate. Now they sell those in about half of the states. Uh, they sell them at the county level. And uh, there's 3,000 counties in the United States. You live, if most of you that are watching me, probably live in California. Now in California, they're not so benevolent. No, no, no. They're going to say, wait a minute, if you don't pay your tax, they issue a tax default right away. They issue tax. But California is very lenient. They issue it one year. They issue it two years. They issue it three years. They issue it four years. At the end of the fifth year, they'll just confiscate the property if you haven't paid the tax. All right. Now, what are they going to do with a confiscated property? In Los Angeles County, they will confiscate 1,500 to 2,500 properties every year. What on earth is the government going to do with those properties? They say, we don't need any more property. We got the we got the mountains, we got the ocean. We don't want any more property. They don't want them. So what they do is they have a tax defaulted auction. They're going to auction those properties off. So you say, well, what are they going to auction them for? They're going to start the bidding at just the back taxes. But remember, it was five years back taxes. All five years, they're going to stack it up there and say, who wants them? And they're going to sell them. Bang, bang, bang. As fast as I can snap my fingers, they'll sell a property at that auction. Not a place for amateurs. You want to go and watch. You don't want to go bid the first one because it's going to go too fast for you. All right. 
Now, you don't have to buy in Los Angeles. There's a whole state here. We got 58 counties in the state from San Bernardino all the way up into the Alpine counties and whatever. All right, so depending upon where you're watching, I'm going to show you on this video, I'll show you people buying properties for 25 and 30 cents on the dollar with no mortgage. Folks, if you can buy a property for 30 cents or even if you send 50 cents on the dollar in California, you just made a great deal. Los Angeles County is the biggest auction. I just uh, had my people, uh, we showed them how to do an auction in San Diego just two weeks before we filmed this. Two weeks ago, they did San Diego. They had 600 properties in San Diego. Now, a good 400 of those were over in the desert, you know, the other side of the mountains. So um, some, not all of those sold. Some people don't want desert property. They, they definitely want the coastal property. But they were making good deals, 25, 30 cents on the dollar. You're not going to steal a property in California. But if you can get one for somewhere between 10 and 30 cents on the dollar, you're doing pretty darn good. Remember, they have no mortgage when the auction takes place. The auction wipes out the mortgage. I didn't make that rule. The state of California legislature made that, and they make sure that that treasurer enforces it. So it was kind of a long answer, but there you go. <laughs> okay, and that is stealing if you're going to get it at 10, 30 percent. Right. Uh, so no, another question came to mind. Um, do the counties automatically send the taxes paid to you plus the interest uh, at the end of the redemption period? Or do we have to inquire or do that ourselves to redeem, redeem the tax lien certificates? Oh, um, that's pretty automatic. Actually, most of the sales for tax liens now are online. So you can sit at your computer and you could buy in Florida, you could buy in Georgia, you could buy any state. And when you do it on computer, you, they're going to actually take the money out of your checking account. So they'll do the reverse of that when they get paid. They get paid, they'll just start putting money in. Like I have a guy that works for me. He buys thirty to 50000 in tax certificates every year. And he, uh, he just delights in calling me up and said, Ted, I just got a text. I said, oh, what's the text say? And he said, oh, it's from SunTrust Bank right here in Florida. And they just sent me another $750. So every time one pays off, he, he has to call me up to just barb me with it. He just let me know that he, he's making money, right? So, okay, yeah. so th that's what they do. So it's kind of fun. Okay, well, the tax lien certificates sound great, but um, you want to give us a, tell us a little bit more about the tax defaulted properties? Well, tax defaulted properties will be available in half of the states. So one of the states I've been buying in is, um, I, uh, I'll show you examples of California for my students, but last year I decided I would do stuff in New York, and I did about nine properties, and they're really uh, uh, properties that were, um, we call them in the East, they call them colonial, so they're big two-story houses, and sometimes they're on four acres because uh, the opposite of California, New York has a lot of acreage. And it's not unusual to get a house with four acres or six acres. And I'm getting those houses for round numbers about 30 cents on the dollar. And in some cases, I fix them. Most of the time, I just resell them. I'll show you some pictures right here. Matter of fact, let me show you just some pictures right now. All right, so those are, those are three or four that I bought at, uh, to just show you. This is not a junk business. You can buy good stuff. I tell people, avoid the junk, but you're not going to be able to steal the property. You're going to get, you're going to, going to get some competitive bidding there. So I don't want to get, give people the impression you're going to get them for five cents on the dollar. Now, 30 years ago, we used to buy properties for $1,500, believe it or not. All right. Now the property values have gone up so much and people understand real estate. You know, now instead of making five grand on a deal, we're trying to make 25, 50 and 100,000 on a deal. And I can certainly show you that. This is great, Ted, because you obviously walk your talk. I mean, you've been in business for a long time, made a lot of money, but still you're out there doing this every week or every month and buying these that's properties right. yourself. So you walk yeah, your talk. Well, that's where we make the money. The big money comes in from that. I did one last year that that I had had, had a big struggle with because uh, the title was got messed up and, and a lot of stuff. And so I'm going to make a case study of it, which these people might get to see if they come to my class. But the point is, that property gave me a tough time, but it was so big it had 12 acres, so I divided it. And I just took, I just sold seven acres and I kept five, and now I'm selling the five. I own the five. I don't have any bill on all, at all on the five. I'll probably get 125 for 125,000. Can you imagine on one deal, 125,000? Very cool. <laughs> Not too bad. It's happening every day. Yeah. So, and I can show you brochures from those kind of auctions too, if you want to see them. Yeah. Well, so we're we're here in California. Some of us are into that. Uh, what's the fastest state 
out there to get access to property? Oh, hands down, it's Texas. Texas is ruthless about tax collection. Here's how it works. If you live in Texas, uh, they have strong rules in Texas about running their business. So if you don't pay your tax, every month they'll have a tax auction in Texas. I mean, every month. And uh, you and I, any of us can go. They have 250 counties there. So let's just take a place like Houston. So I'll just use that as the example. You could be in San Antonio or Dallas or, or you know, El Paso, wherever you want to be. But let's take Houston. Houston's got 6 million people. If you go to that auction, I have never in 30 years seen less than 200 properties, less than 200. All right. That property will be auctioned and you can raise your hand and buy the deed to that property. Now, whatever you pay for that deed, most of the homeowners, most of the ranch holders will come in and buy it back. When they come back to come in to buy it back, they have to give you back all your money plus 25%. Now, they don't have a lot of time. If you buy it today, they've got 180 days. In that 180 days, if they haven't bought it back, you will own the deed and, it, and you'll own it for, 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 for life if you want, whatever you want. You actually own the property at the 180 days. So that's pretty fast. Now, California, there's nothing slow about California, except the county government is slow. So if you buy in Los Angeles, I'll show you videos of people buying in let's say Los Angeles and San Bernardino County, they have to wait 45 to 60 days for the, more, for, the, for the deed to come. So you're just waiting during that time. You can't go on the property until you have the deed. So the law says you don't own it until you have the deed. But Los Angeles County, they're just slow moving. It just takes a while for it to get going. But you can own a property as quick as 60 days in Los Angeles. I'd planned on 90. Okay. So yeah. in your opinion then, what are the best states to buy tax deeds in? My opinion is learn how to do this and do it the way we do it now. In the old days, we had to drive to all these places, beg them for a list, and then go out and look at the properties. All of this can be done online. So you can attend five or seven auctions in a month without leaving home sitting right in Los Angeles. Wow. And you can just do the state of California if you want it. Now, there's going to be plenty in Arizona. There's going to be plenty in what the hottest market in the past three years is not Los Angeles. I can tell you that the hottest market is Seattle. Seattle. Uh, now, this is not my number. I have an attorney working in, in, in uh, Seattle for me, and I do deals with my students from time to time. And so I had a student needed money. The one to do it said split with me. And I said, OK, I'll do the deal with you. And the student did all the work. I, I this, my attorney said, look, Ted, just go slow. I said, well, no, I want to get he said, just slow down. I said, why do you want me to slow down? He said, the property has gone up every year for the past four at 25% a year. Now, wow. this is before all this, before all this giveaway of money from the federal government. So the Seattle market is up very close to 100%, 100% in the last four years. So there's not there, there's plenty of places to buy real estate. But the beauty of what I'm telling everybody is if they'll learn the way we teach today. And I have people that give classes on it. If they they can sit in Los Angeles and buy in Seattle, or if they want to buy in Texas, they can buy there. The whole world has changed, and the people are just going to have to change with it. Now, let me tell you who's who's going to, is real good at this. Okay, the younger people are moving at the speed of a bullet. Our old time real estate people, the old timers, they want to buy and fix up and all that. That's kind of the past. Let me tell you, that takes too long. Now you got a lot of gray hair like that. You're going to have to learn these new, because these guys are going like that. Fast as you can clap your hands, they're moving. Uh, my young students do much better than, you know, now I say young, I'm talking about, uh, I'm not going to get students in their 20s and 30s. It's never going to happen. We, our average student is 45 to 105, 45 to 105. Yeah. Yeah. But if they, if they can, if they can get on a Zoom call, we can teach them everything they need to know. Very cool. Yeah. So um, you mentioned an attorney. Uh, is an attorney or a broker required to buy a tax defaulted property or a tax lien? No, that's the beauty in this thing is uh, no attorneys required. There's no outside help needed. We're going to teach you everything that you need to know, and we'll show you everything to check before. And we can even put, we even have coaches that will take you to the auction if you want. If you don't want them to and you want them to do it online with you, they'll do it that way. Uh, we, we only do this. My office has 
four facilitators. They give a, a call every day. There's never a day you can't call my office and get questions. We give coaching to every client for one year. If they become a client, they have a coach for one solid year. Now, I'm not talking about a coach about some guy that just read the book. I'm talking about 60-year-old people that are deal makers. That's who our coaches are. You can't be a coach for me unless you're, make, you're making deals. If you're not making deals, you can't, you can't work in my, in my environment. It's just not impossible. So we have someone every single day. All we do is teach tax lien and deed. We don't do anything else. Very cool. Yeah. So let me ask you a hypothetical question, Ted. If you had a good chunk of money, 50 grand, 100 grand, whatever, would you buy a bunch of small tax lien certificates or maybe just maybe some big ones, a couple of big ones? All right, well, I, you got, you, you'll, you'll have choices, okay? So uh, I bought a lot of certificates over the years in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, now the reason I bought in Phoenix is there were so many single family homes there and there were so many that were in default of $2,000 tax. So 10,000 bucks would get me five of them. So if I buy five of them, I'm hoping one of them doesn't, doesn't pay and I get the house, right? But I never got a house. I always, I always got paid. But what I did do is there were a big fancy shopping center came up and the shopping center is worth millions and they didn't pay their tax. And so the tax bill was $100,000. Actually, it was $113,000. I'll never forget it. Hundred. So I bought that one. Okay, now there was bidding on it. So I didn't get 16. I got 13% of my money. Problem was 11 and a half months they paid me. I was so disappointed <laughs> because if they didn't pay me, I would have got the shopping center. Okay. Okay, well, um, you mentioned those $2,000. What's the cheapest you've ever seen someone get attached to faulted property for? Oh, listen, you know, this, this is, I, I, you won't believe this, but I'll show it to the people. I'll, I'll show it to them. All right, so I got a guy over in Georgia. He's a preacher. He works in the prison system and he teaches Islam and he teaches Christianity. Now, there's some, there's some different ones, right? So he's teaching that in the print. I started to teach him how to do it. So he goes to this auction and it was at a, at a, at a it wasn't a county. It was like a township, a little municipality. And they had a property they wanted to sell and he was afraid to buy it. So I said, well, why didn't you buy it? He said, well, nobody else showed up for the auction. So I thought something was wrong. I said, oh my goodness. So he had me on the phone. I said, go back to the auction and see if they'll still sell it. You, you won't believe this, but I'll show you the deal. He bought a house for $316, $316. It's a two bedroom, one bath house, livable house. Now get this, it gets better. Because he called me, he said, what should I do? I said, I'd sell it. He said, no, no, I want to buy stuff. I don't want to sell stuff. I said, okay. So he decided to rent it. So he asked me, but I'm in Florida. I don't know what the rent was in Georgia. So he put a notice out in the neighborhood. What should it rent for? Now he bought it for 316. He rented it for a whole year at $6,000 for the year. Wow. On a $300 investment. Now I never made one that, I got to tell you, I never made one that big myself. I never did that well, but I bought a lot of stuff. I like to buy good properties that sell. I try to be the opposite of everybody at the auction. Everybody wants to buy a little one. I want to, I want to try to buy the big one. That's what, I would, that's what I try to do. Because the markup is so... So think about a $400,000 house. Even if I paid $150,000, what's my margin? Just a silly question. Can I buy at these auctions with a credit card? Oh, no, that's a good question. No, that's a great question. Um, some counties will sell on a credit card. I've got one client that's bought 60 properties in six years, all on a credit card. Wow. Okay, because I know a lot of our folks use credit cards for yeah. a lot of things. They can um, do it. They can do it online and on a credit card. So let me ask you just one last question, and I'm going to cut it off, because I know some folks are going to ask, what about houses that are still in debt with the bank? You know, can they, how can they, how can a tax lien just, uh, you know, how can you buy a house with, with, that has mortgages already on it? Unless the bank writes it off or something. Okay, it's a perfect question. The question is, what happens to the mortgage? All right, so let's talk about this for a second. So first of all, if it's a tax lien certificate that you're buying, when they sell the tax lien certificate, they notify the bank. They notify the bank. Why? Because if you don't pay the tax, the bank's going to want to pay it 
because otherwise the banks will get wiped out. You see, everybody in America that's involved in real estate, not from the, our perspective, but that knows about title and knows about banking, knows that the tax lien certificate is the first lien on the property. And if the tax lien certificate goes to foreclosure, it wipes out the mortgage and wipes out all the liens on the property. All right, now the same thing takes place at a tax default deduction. So in Los Angeles, everybody's got a big mortgage. So these properties that are going to tax auction, I can tell you right now, they're gonna have mortgages on them, but those mortgages are gonna be wiped out because the tax collector will give due process, okay? So the tax collector, meaning the treasurer, will give due process and will say, okay, Bank of America, we're taking this to auction for non-payment of taxes. Now the Bank of America needs to do something, either come in and pay the tax, if they don't, they lose the money. So whenever you buy a tax lien, there's, you, the tax lien is the safest investment you ever can buy. Why? Because you give money to the government, you're gonna get checked money, ba money back from the government. But hold on, if you don't get paid by the homeowner on a tax certificate, you're gonna get paid by the bank because the bank doesn't wanna get wiped out. You've got two people to pay you every time you buy it, two entities to pay you every time you buy a tax certificate. Now, when you go to a tax defaulted auction, the mortgages are gone. There is no mortgage. It's over. It's that is gone so already. cool. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah. So yeah. folks, you're gonna to wanna to come back and uh, check your email to listen you know, to either your past, uh, the past interviews or to today's again, or we're gonna have at least one more of these. And I wanna emphasize, tune in for our live meeting on, well, it'll be on Zoom, not that kind of live. Um, on those dates, Ted will be able to go into a lot more detail than he can today on our short Q&A. So with that, let me thank you so much, Ted, for today, and uh, we'll be seeing you very soon. Okay, great stuff. We, we did not know anything with, about tax foreclosure sales in depth. We knew they existed, but we didn't know what we could possibly do and how easy it was to, to go with the program. And then we also didn't know that it was possible because when we heard, we thought it was too good to be true to be able to buy homes for back taxes. And once we found out that was true, then we bought a 45-foot coach and decided to retire from our jobs and get out of the rat race and go make some money and live a different lifestyle, live free. So that's why we're doing tax deeds. And with this, we can, we can drive, get on our bus, travel over the country, find those tax liens and deeds, and uh, have a great time doing it. We obviously started buying, and for instance, this house, we bought 20 cents on the dollar, and we're going to profit over $39,000 when we sell this one.